Yeah, welcome. Oh, wow. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about this opportunity to talk because usually the settings I talk about code are very specific. Either there are people who have no idea what code is all about. So I started the very basics, um, explain our learning concept and, and why we're doing what we're doing. Or I'm talking to code students who already know much about code or have just started studying. And today I want to kind of let you in on the journey that, that we as a code team went through uh, over the last almost four years now, and especially the journey when it comes to, to our learning concept and the goals that we see um, in our learning concept, embedded in our learning concept when it comes to our students and when it comes to our graduates. And so it was a great opportunity when I was invited or asked by Jana if I wanted to, to join the series and, and give a talk to actually sit down and reflect on, on what's been going on over the last three or almost four years now. And also looking into the future, I realized that I'm actually, I'm actually a little bit worried or maybe worried is not the right word because I don't tend to worry too much, but I see for us as a society, I see a lot of challenges ahead of us. And, and just to give you an example of what I'm talking about, these are the 17 sustainable development goals as the United Nations put them. And they're basically representing huge, challenging problems that we need to solve in the not so distant future, let's say. And you, I think we could all agree that those aren't easy to solve problems. Um, and that probably, even if I'm looking at my generation, we won't be solving them. So we're looking at the younger kids out there, the next generations to actually solve these problems or find meaningful solutions and approaches and ways of dealing with them. And, and that's gonna be hard, but it's going to be necessary for us as humanity to continue um, to, to, to prosper and, and enjoy and, and allow a lot more people than today, even more people than today to, to enjoy their life and, and have access to to food and sanitary um, and, and sanitation and healthcare and all this and, and education, of course. So there's a lot to do. And at the same time, the world is not just full of challenges. It's also full of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. I'm sure a lot of you have already heard about these words and the, the abbreviation VUCA world and I don't want to go into details. I just want to add one more thing because um, I think technology needs to be on that list as well because it has a huge impact on our society today and it will have an even bigger impact on tomorrow's society. So we need to add this to the list of things that are happening, that are shaping the world we're living in. So looking back at 2016, when we started thinking about code, we also started thinking about uh, what our students would be like and what our graduates would be like and what would be expected of them. And pretty soon we had this idea of, um, yeah, we want them to be able to, to take on these problems. We want them to be able to shape the world of tomorrow, to understand technology, to know what's good or bad, what's right or wrong and to have the confidence to, to do all these things. But then of course we asked ourselves, how do we even do that? How could you even, how could you even think about creating a learning environment that would allow students to grow into something, some, in someone like that? Because when we looked at traditional educational institutions, what we saw that most of them were still expecting students to learn whatever was taught but not to develop some sort of entrepreneurial spirit or uh, follow their own curiosity and, and all that wasn't happening. So that's where we wanted to make a difference. We wanted to find new ways of providing a learning environment that would allow students to develop into someone who has all that, who has what it takes to take on these meaningful challenges and to shape the world of tomorrow. And we call it trying to educate the digital pioneers of tomorrow. That, that was a claim that, was, uh, that we started with pretty early on in 26, 2016, 2017. But to be honest, we weren't really sure what a digital pioneer would look like. 
I mean, back then we didn't even have students. And even the, when the first students started studying, uh, they were far from, from, from graduating and they were so diverse and had so different backgrounds and goals and, and learning journeys that we didn't find a common idea of what a digital pioneer might look like. But we knew that we wanted to start somewhere. And this uh, was the idea of providing a curiosity driven education. So this is what the first cornerstone of our educational concept looks like, looked like because we said, okay, what is it that we all start with? Um, we all start with being curious about the world. And if you look at humanity, curiosity is the driving force behind all the innovations that we've made, all curiosity and chance, but um, curiosity, of course, was an important part of it. And as a child, we learn driven, just driven by our inner curiosity until we, until we go to school. And so we imagined a, a learning environment where not the professors and teachers would come up with things to learn and students would just listen to them and learn the things they were expected to learn. We wanted to provide a learning environment where everyone would start by asking themselves, what is it that I am curious about? What is it that sparks my interest? And with curiosity, the interesting thing is it tends to grow once you start following it. Once you start looking into things, you come up with new questions that are again intriguing and kind of drive you into looking deeper and asking more and more questions. So curiosity is kind of a self-sustaining um, and self-accelerating process once you start with it. The problem is many people have been growing up and learning and working in environments that don't really allow a lot of room for this idea of following your own curiosity. So curiosity driven was the first cornerstone of our learning concept. And then we asked ourselves, what, what would it look like if just people came together and just started following their own curiosity? And they would engage in discussions and they would read and they would study and they would learn things. And that's gonna be great. But to become curious about something, you first need to know something. You need to be introduced to ideas, to concepts, to, to facts. But how can I be curious about something I don't even know exists? So we realized there needs to be more than just a free open space for everyone to discover their inner curiosity. There also needs to be a way of introducing people to new ideas and concepts and help them to learn things that so you can really start on this journey of being curious and becoming even more curious about things you're learning. So we realized curiosity driven is not enough. We need more than that. And that's why we added a science, technology and society program where we said, this is the place, this is the space for students to get introduced to concepts and ideas, fundamental ideas about the world, about life, about philosophy, and to become curious, to start digging in deeper, to start asking questions and trying to understand the world. Learning, of course, gathering knowledge and trying to make sense of, of how to connect the dots and how things, how things come together. So as the second cornerstone of our learning concept, we wanted to have this place that we now call the science, technology and society program. Because curiosity needs a place to start and that was supposed to be one of the places. But still we realized even if we manage to introduce our students to new ideas and they start being curious and follow these ideas and learn more about it and discuss and, and isn't that just a place for scholars and, 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 and researchers and thinkers? Not that there's anything bad with that, but it, it wasn't yet anything that, that, a, that a pioneer would come out of because pioneers tend to do things. They're not just satisfied with thinking about something, learning about something. So we were still intrigued by this, this question of how do you turn people who love to think and love to discover into change makers, into makers, into people who are actually doing something. Because otherwise we would probably just rebuild an, an old school, very traditional university in the best sense possible. But, but that wasn't the, the idea because again, we wanted to have people, students who want to take on 
big challenges and try to change the world. So we realized there needs to be more than just curiosity-driven learning and a science, technology, and society program that introduces you to new ideas and challenges your curiosity. So the third part, the third cornerstone was projects. Because project means a project is basically a way of challenging a student to try to understand and try to take on a meaningful problem and come up with some kind of solution. And it, it's great because it forces you to, to think about how to put your knowledge and your acquired skills into practice. And, and you will figure out whether you, the things you've learned actually mean anything when it comes to solving real world problems. And you can also figure out what kind of problems spark your interest. What kind of problems motivate you to actually work on them? In what ways do you want to make a difference? That is why projects are so important um, as the partner of curiosity-driven learning or curiosity-driven education. And we also realize that there's two kinds of problems when it comes to education. There's these very deliberately developed, um, finely detailed problems that have been uh, that have been created by by teachers by professors uh, that are solely created for students to learn something very specific. So when creating the problem, you already know what outcome you're hoping for, what learning outcome when students start working on these problems, and these problems are well defined. The issue is that real world problems tend to be everything but well defined. They are ill-defined, if at all. So the challenge usually doesn't start with, hey, there's this problem, and now I just have to pick the right method of solving it. The challenge starts with, hey, I think there is a problem out there, but I don't really understand it. I can't really describe it, let alone agree with other people that we have the same understanding of a problem. So we wanted our students to be confronted with real world problems, with with messy problems, with ill-defined problems. So they, they would be required to not start with a solution, but start with understanding the problem. You may have heard, as a code student, you definitely have heard of the phrase, fall in love with the problem, not the solution. This is where it comes from. Because understanding a problem in the real world is pretty hard. And it's a skill of its own. So creative problem solving is not enough. You need some, some skill in problem understanding and problem discovering. So that's why we said, OK, let's, let's not invent these problems or projects ourselves. Let's introduce partners, partner organizations. These people deal with problems every day. And they deal with real world problems because they are in the real world. And, and so we wanted partner organizations to work together with our students to pitch projects and pitch ideas and share problems with them that they were facing in the real world. So our students would have a chance to apl apply their knowledge, not just solving theoretically existing problems, but real world problems. And another thing was great about problems because we tend to be to, to work to need to work together to solve problems. So a problem also pro offers you the opportunity to learn something about collaboration and communication, how to work together, how to agree on, on things and how to become an effective team, especially in an environment where your teams tend to be very diverse, consisting of people with different professional backgrounds, different study programs, but also different cultural backgrounds. And this is another very important skill for, for someone that, who can call themselves a digital pioneer to be able to work together because this is the only way we can solve these huge meaningful challenges that are out there. So that's why curiosity driven, the STS science technology and society program, project based learning and the partner organizations basically came together as the initial cornerstones of our learning concept. And with projects and partners and working in teams, we realize there's another thing that is very important and that is interpersonal skills. All that matters when it comes to working together, all that matters when it comes to being a great team player and being an effective team. So that became another cornerstone of a learning concept. And this, um, like many other journeys, of course, starts with yourself, being aware of how you communicate, how you uh, perceive others, how you, what kind of impression you make on other people, 
and how you react to someone be, being accusing you of something, someone challenging you, someone criticizing you, like it, developing this awareness for yourself in certain social contexts is a, is a key element of interpersonal skill, how to give feedback, how to take on feedback, um, not become defensive, but see it as an opportunity to grow and learn and, and become better at what you're doing. So I'm, I'm taking you on this journey. And of course, it hasn't happened in a way that I'm, that I'm narrating it now. But, but looking back, this is how, how pieces came together and, and how, how they built, how they, how they became a puzzle and um, a meaningful concept in, in general. So that's not where our journey ended. Because again, pioneers tend to do new things, approach way approach um, problems in new ways uh, discover new things new technologies new areas whatever it is so another question that we had was how can we how can we help our students develop an entrepreneurial mindset and again projects were a great way because we, re we realized that a project is something that challenges you but once you start understanding the problem and come up with a solution you see yourself as someone who actually can make a difference. Like you create something, you create a product, a solution, some new approach. And even if you fail, you fail because you've tried. You've tried to, to solve a problem. You've tried to come up with something new. And this tends to give you a sense of self-efficacy, self-determination, that you have what it takes to actually make a difference when you take on a problem. And in doing this over and over again throughout our project-based learning concept, uh, we hope that this is what students need to develop this entrepreneurial mindset. So once they graduate, they go out into the real world already having this experience of, I've already made a difference in certain situations, so I'm confident that I could do it again. And it doesn't really mean that everyone needs to become a, a startup founder. Having this entrepreneurial mindset means that you approach any situation, be it in your private life, in your social environment, in your professional environment, as an environment that you can shape, where you can have an impact, make a difference, or make the famous dent in the universe, if you will. So all that basically came together when we started developing the, developing the learning concept. And to be honest, a lot of things we've realized after we've started because we saw our students do these things. We saw that our students developed these kinds of understandings, the mindset, the skills, and some things came, came together after a couple of, um, couple of months. Uh, for some things, it took a little longer. So establishing the interpersonal skills program as, a, as their own as a program within code um, is, is a fairly new development, but now it all seems to make sense. And doing all that Ria, make, made me or me, us discussing all that uh, made us realize that the whole educational concept is not the goal in itself. It's a means to an end. And, and that's what I wanted to talk about that this end is the pioneer's mindset. So if you will, of course, we want code students to graduate. Of course, we want them to become great interaction designers, great product managers, and great uh, software engineers. But equally important is that they all develop the pioneer's mindset that prepares them for what's out there, all these huge challenges that are waiting that need people that take them on and, and start working on solutions for them. And I just want to walk you through what I think, what we think right now should be part of this pioneer's mindset. And having all this introduction now may probably gives you an idea of how we think or how we hope that our students are able to develop these elements of the pioneer's mindset. So not surprisingly starts with genuine curiosity. And it's still, it, it's still the cornerstone because it helps you discover the world and discover so much about yourself. It also helps you become an independent thinker, um, not be influenced by other people, always asking why, or is this true? Or how do we know? Um, approaching everything with this sentiment of, hmm, interesting. I wonder why or how or what, 
And then you start asking questions and dig deeper and, and continue. And genuine curiosity is important because it's not the superficial way of, well, yeah, being curious about, I don't know, chit chat or just learning things about someone else. It's this deep desire to actually understand what's going on, to understand what's happening behind the curtain, what's happening behind the screen um, and, and, and how things are connected. So this should be um, a very important aspect of the pioneer's mindset. And another thing is uh, a mindset within a mindset is a growth mindset, which basically says, um, and this is definitely something we stole from, from Carol Dweck, uh, seeing yourself as someone who can develop, who can change, who can improve, who can learn, um, not seeing yourself as someone who's basically fixed and, and is just the way um, they are, you can grow, your intelligence can grow, you can expand your knowledge, you can learn new things. And every challenge is not something that threatens you because you might fail and then you're a failure. It is an opportunity to learn and grow and understand where the limits of your current skills are and what you need to learn in order to cope with the challenge. So this growth mindset is a very essential part of being a pioneer or having the pioneer's mindset. And I think it's already something we're looking for when we try to figure out um, who should be studying at code because it's a prerequisite for this way of learning. But it's also that we know that our students need to continue to learn because graduate, graduating today doesn't mean you can stop learning. We all need to learn until we die basically or we die when we stop learning. Another thing that is very important and has been covered with interpersonal skills and, and teamwork and all that is empathy and self-awareness. And I'm, I'm still not sure whether empathy includes empathy towards myself. So I added self-awareness and, and empathy, not just because it just makes you a nice human being to be around. It also is, a, is an actual skill because it makes you a better team player. You are able to understand what's going on with other people so you can relate to them. You can understand what, why certain communications are hard or why certain conflicts arise because you can see the world through other people's eyes. You can kind of understand their emotional status and you can relate to all that. Also makes you a great, uh, a great uh, developer and a, and a great product designer because understanding your customers and their needs helps you develop better products. And self-awareness, of course, is also the foundation of, of learning and growing because if I'm not aware of my deficits, of my strengths and weaknesses, it's hard to understand where I should grow and what I should learn in order to add to my current, to my current com competency profile. So this empathy and self-awareness is an essential part of the pioneer's mindset. And then already mentioned, there's this entrepreneurial spirit, this idea that you have what it takes to make a difference because it's not enough just to think about things and try to gather knowledge. You, at some point you have to put things into practice. And that means you have to tr have this confidence in yourself that you can actually change something, shape the world, um, take on problems that no one has solved yet and, and, and still come up with new and innovative approaches. So this is what I'd like to call the pioneer's mindset, but there's more because there's also a skill set something that's not really, cannot really be part of a mindset, but still is ne necessary, like part of the, the set, the, the skill set that pioneers need. And this is what I already mentioned, creative problem discovery and problem solving. And I already told you why I think the problem solving part isn't enough, because I think the discovery part, the understanding part is, is as important, if not more important than the actual solving. I'm, I'm always amazed by the fact that, that people out there every day create products that I want to buy, not because this, the marketing is great, but because they're actually solving problems I have. So I have had these problems for a while, but I've never thought of them as problems to solve. Or if I did, I had no idea what a solution would look like. Other people do, and all of a sudden I want to buy their product. So this is a kind of a way of an entrepreneurial way of looking at the world and being able to discover problems and or to describe them where others just felt that there's something wrong or there needs to be a solution, but they, they haven't really come up with what the solution might look like. So having new and creative ways of looking at the world, discovering new and meaningful problems and coming up with approaches to solve them is definitely part of the pioneer skill set. 
And then, as I said, I don't think we can solve any of those meaningful problems alone. So we need to collaborate, we need to communicate. So the skill of collaboration and communication is very important for any pioneer. And it's, it's easier said than done, especially when you think about how to, how to learn this or how to help people develop these kinds of skill sets. Because just visiting a seminar on how to be a good team player doesn't make you a good team player. You have to be in these situations over and over again. You have to be challenged. You have to have someone who helps you reflect on your strengths and weaknesses in these situations. You have to learn how to influence people, how to bring your message through, how to listen to other people and listen not just in, in, in the sense of waiting until it's your turn to say something, but listen to understand. Again, back to the empathy part. So being a good team player, being a good collaborator and a good communicator is definitely essential because you need to work together with other people and not just with other people who are looking the same and speaking the same language and have the same background as you, but diverse teams and people that are different from you. And then there's one aspect that is kind of a given at code, I would say, but maybe it's not because techno literacy is this profound understanding of technology and how it influences our world. And this is not, this has nothing to do, or this is not just being able to write code or program a computer. This is also not just knowing how certain technologies work. It's this fundamental understanding that lets you make sense of technological developments, even though you don't understand them yet. It's like being able to read doesn't mean you have to read every book, doesn't mean you will understand every book, but it's a necessary prerequisite that you can if you really want to and if you put your mind to it. So even if someone doesn't know what blockchain actually is, they would have the ability to understand the concept if they have this basic techno literacy. And I think in this future society that is heavily influenced by technology, people have to have this basic understanding of what's going on in a computer, in a smartphone, what the internet actually is, what kind of communication happens, what happens with our data. All this is part of being a techno literate. So as a pioneer, as someone who needs to have the ability to use technology to create solutions, to solve problems, you have to have this basic techno literacy. And then there's one very important thing, which I like to call critical judgment. Usually, if you look at something like a set of 21st century skills, and it says at this point, critical thinking. But I've already pointed out why I think that thinking is not enough. Because thinking doesn't get you doing anything. It doesn't get you into action. If you really want to change something, you need to start doing things. And that means at some point, you have to come to a point where you say, this is how I assume the world works right now. I know that it's never going to be the truth. And I know that I will probably think different about this tomorrow. But for now, I need something to act on. You have to make a judgment. You have to say, this is how it is now. And now I can, can, can act on it. I can do something. I can try to make a difference with the knowledge I have, with the understanding I have today. And critical judgment also gives you some kind of moral compass, some idea of what's right or wrong and how, what to do if, if your actions actually improve the world, make the world a better place, or hurt more people than they would benefit. So. That's, that's, that's a very important aspect because if you look at the world right now, especially the world of technology, we see what's happening if people have almost the whole pioneer's mind and skill set, but not the critical judgment part, not the moral compass, not the sense of what it means to do good in the world. So with, with the rest not and not having that, you can, you can do a lot of bad things. You can create a lot of technology or technological solutions and products that actually hurt people. And make and don't make the world a better place. So a very important aspect, critical judgment. And taking that together, um, in a way, code has made this journey from providing a curiosity-driven learning concept or curiosity-driven education to we want to foster a pioneer's mindset in all our students. And again, that's, I'm not talking at all about content of our study programs. I'm not talking about what it takes to be a great interaction designer or product manager or software engineer. I would say it doesn't matter at all what you want to become or what you have become, what your profession is or what your personal or professional goals in life are. This pioneer's mindset is something that everyone needs, that everyone needs who wants to have a chance to actually shape, co-create and co-design 
this world of tomorrow that we want to live in. And as I always do, I'd like to end with uh, Alan Kay quote, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. And for us, that means we want our students to be able to invent their own future. And I think the pioneer's mindset is what they need for that. Thank you. Nice, thank you so much, Manuel. <laughs>